fixing model steam engine problems in the workshop. This was an interesting job and the solution to this particular problem was complicated, but it was successful and that is the main thing. This engine was in a dreadful state when I first picked it up from Manchester for my friend. The key for the flywheel was a rusty nail, but that was an easy fix. This is a bit more complicated. Someone has drilled a hole in the centre of the cylinder to fit a lubricator. The fix that I finally used was simple yet complicated. I machined a cast iron sleeve and fitted it to the cylinder. Also, I machined a groove full length across the top of the liner, which allowed the oil to flow from the cylinder oiler in the centre of the top of the cylinder to either end. I've paused the video because here you can actually see where I'd relieved the end of the groove so that the oil could flow into the cylinder from the lubricator in the centre of the cylinder. This job obviously reduced the diameter of the cylinder, but it was oversized anyway. I machined the original piston to fit into the new liner, and here it is, fitted with a steam-grade silicone o-ring. I could have fitted a cast iron piston ring, but this will be perfectly fine. An alternative to this repair job would have been to leave the cylinder alone, make a new piston altogether, and groove it to take two cast iron piston rings. I chose to sleeve the cylinder because the original bore wasn't brilliant, and once I fitted this liner in position using Loctite 603, the job was a success, as you will see shortly. Before fully assembling the engine, I wanted to test how effective the piston seal was. I connected a length of silicone rubber tubing to the steam inlet, and opened the valve on the compressor to let a very small amount of compressed air into the engine. And as you can see here, it's really successful. As I move the slide valve, the piston responds perfectly. And there are no tight spots whatsoever. I was so impressed by this, I did it for a while. There's something good about what's happening here. Poetry in motion from a really old, quite large model steam engine. The cylinder bore is now just below 2 inches in diameter, which should give plenty of power. After all, it's not going to be doing much work, it's just going to be part of a collection. But I always say, form follows function. If a model steam engine doesn't work and just sits on a shelf, that's no good. The whole point of having a steam engine collection is that they all need to work, and work well. This engine was in a bit of a state, so I started the cosmetic renovation at the same time. I chose to rub down the cylinder with the new liner in place, because if it works loose it's not a success, but the good news is it didn't work loose at all. Despite being heavily vibrated with an orbital sander, and sat in a tub with cellulose thinners in it, and being drenched in cellulose thinners during the paint removal process. At no time did the liner move, so I'm really quite confident that this is going to work. It took a while to clean up the cylinder and get rid of all the paint. Here, after rubbing down the wooden cladding a bit more, it's starting to look a whole lot better. This next clip has nothing to do with the repair. I'm rubbing down the main casting. It was in a bit of a state, and as you can see, it was originally green. To start with, I rubbed down the green paint and sprayed it with this primer. But the marks in the original paint really didn't look good as I'm showing here. All the original marks in the paint could be clearly seen. There's only one thing for it. I'm using some stuff called knifing putty or cellulose stopper. This is not ordinary body filler because it's never a good idea to put body filler over paint or primer if you can help it. This stuff is designed to fill imperfections. After rubbing down the cellulose putty, another coat of sprayed primer, followed by painting the engine bed using precision paints, Caledonian blue, it now looks like this. I'm sure that you will agree that it is a big improvement from the original paint job. Precision paints are available from my friends at Blackgate's Engineering. The address is on screen. I also painted the governor mounting in the same colour. This paint is really good stuff, and once you've finished the paint job, the brush marks magically disappear. Time now for reassembly. I'm checking the fit of the crosshead in the crosshead guide bars, and it's very good indeed. The piston rod is connected to this crosshead, 
by a taper pin tapped into a tapered hole. Here's the pin, and here I am tapping it into position. I didn't tap the pin into position just on the crosshead, I put a support underneath it. I'm checking the job at each assembly point. Here the crosshead is connected to the piston rod, but there is a problem. I did, of course, forget to fit the gland cover. In this clip, I'm rectifying that, and the gland is now fitted to the piston rod. As you can see, everything lines up very well. I thought it would be a good idea at this stage to apply some oil. Although I haven't shown it, I wound some graphited yarn around the piston rod and fitted the gland cover. Here, just for a change, I'm using some machine oil to lubricate the parts but it is important when using silicone piston rings not to use machine oil in the cylinder, because certain oils will attack the silicone rubber and make it sticky. Here I'm fitting the big end in place to the crankshaft, and with a bit of lubrication of the small end, I fit that into the crosshead. Notice a thin phosphor bronze bush in the small end. This clip was taken before I packed the gland, by the way. Here's the flywheel. I ended up painting this blue, but it would have looked okay in red. Time now for my main obsession with steam engines, setting the valve timing. Luckily though, with this old engine, the slide valve timing was just about perfect. All I had to do was replace the valve chest cover and get ready for a compressed air test with the engine back in one piece. Here I'm rotating the flywheel by hand, to make sure nothing is fouling and everything's good. Then I connected some low pressure compressed air, this is about 20 pounds per square inch, and the engine burst into life and it runs beautifully. By this time I packed the piston rod gland properly and you can see that because it stuck out quite a bit. And that's it, it's time for me to go. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. I'll leave the engine running at various speeds using compressed air. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.